Um, well, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Just seeing if anyone else wants to join, but I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time because this is 20 minutes of your life that you will never get back. And so I really appreciate you are giving it to me. So just to make sure I have everything. I call this presentation kind of like a vintage presentation because it is a little bit older. I started work on it my very first semester as a grad student and basically had two years to write this paper. So some of the maps definitely crack me up when I looked at this the other day. So, but it's still a really good project and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's see, do I just click? Yeah. So it's definitely structured as a typical thesis presentation. We'll go through introduction, um, lit review methods, discussion. So, but let's just talk about a brief introduction to the project. Basically how it came about was the Historic Salisbury Foundation um, wanted us to conduct some geophysical investigations because they had some reason to believe that a remnant of a main prison barrack was once, you know, on their property. And due to historic maps and other historical journal writings, they thought, you know, if you guys come down and take a look, maybe we can get the exact location. And so we said, sure, why not? So aside from finding the main prison barrack, another goal of ours was to kind of create this historic landscape, this timeline, and to also bring together all previous works that had been done to the site. Um, so this was our main study area, this 313 East Bank Street. Um, we also did some work across the street, 320, um, but it wasn't as important as what we found over here. Um, this nice map was created by the Rowan County GSI. And what they've done here is based from their historic maps and drawings, they have just placed the entire prison out to where it might be um, today. And so this is our main location that we're kind of looking at right here. And it encompasses a nice wall. Let's see, do I just click? Yes. So just a little bit about the actual prison itself. Um, I think it was kind of started about 1861. So basically after North Carolina succeeded from the Union, this was an abandoned cotton mill and the army came in and turned it into a prison barracks. It's located right off this main railway, which I think is why they picked it. It's really easy for things to go in and come out. It has a few small subsidiary buildings. And once again, we see this nice um, wall encompassing the entire prison. At the start of the war, it only had like 127 people in it, but towards the end, it, it housed 10,000 prisoners of war. So um, it was not a nice place. There was disease ran rampant, um, medical supplies were short. And so there was actually 18 mass graves that were used outside of the prison. Um, so it wasn't, it just wasn't a nice place. Um, three days after the uh, war had ended, the prison dissembled and mysteriously burned down. Suspicious, I think so. But the main thing to take away from here is kind of this entryway. I'm not sure what the architectural term is, steeple, entryway, jet out from the facade, but um, just kind of keep this little entryway in mind. So just really briefly, um, once again, one of our goals was to kind of create this timeline for the historic and cultural landscape. So landscapes have cultural meaning and 
based on human interactions with the landscape, you can kind of determine this distribution of patterns and how they live within their own complex society. And so I've made this simple graph here, or I guess chart, um, and this just shows the physical landscape of the of this area. So the cotton mill was constructed, um, the prison barrack was then constructed, the prison burned down. Currently, it's just a residential area. It's still owned by the historical society, so it's, it's not no one building anything on it. And hopefully later, it's going to be maybe a park they wanted to do. So, so let's just briefly talk about what is GPR. Um, for those of you who don't know, GPR stands for Ground Penetrating Radar. And how it works is you're sending short pulses of high-frequency radio waves from this lovely antenna here into the ground. Um, the waves kind of move through the soil, and when the signal has detected like a feature or a buried object, it will send a signal back to the antenna. Um, lots of things can affect the data of this GPR, things like soil properties, sediment, water content, depth of a buried feature, um, tree roots, even cell phones and can throw this thing off. Um, here we have my lovely friend Michael. He's just pushing the GPR. There's the antenna. And what you see, this little bonnet is covering the screen, and it's kind of showing this preliminary data here. So let's talk about some of the previous work that has been done to the site. Um, basically, in 1984 and 1983, Dr. Dee Dee Joyce did some excavation with uh, her field school. She just did archaeological excavation. She didn't do any GPR. But her main goal was to not only locate the prison barracks, but kind of find that uh, wall that kind of encompassed the prison. Um, the good thing about Dr. Joyce's work is I had all of her students field journals, notes, drawings, hand drawings. Luckily, she kind of did a drawing with her datum that was really helpful. Of course, these student journals were really helpful. Newspaper clippings. Um, this image always cracks me up. I think um, I sent it to someone here, and I think it was maybe Henning or someone. They were like, man, Gollum himself came down and helped dig up this <laughs> crab. And, oh, my gosh. Cracked me up. But anyway, um, so Dee did a lot of archaeological stuff. Um, she didn't find any of the... <clears throat> prison remains, but she found a lot of other neat stuff like nails, post holes, ceramic um, artifacts. And we have another person who did some work to the area, Ken Robinson. He is out of Wake Forest. Um, Ken did two, I guess, field schools or works. He came in 2005 and 2012. 2005, he kind of did these one, two, three, four areas, and then he came back to kind of do the lot across the street where we also did some GPR in, um, in that same area. The most unfortunate thing with Ken's work is that there was actually no formal documentation that he did. He really just kind of did this nice PowerPoint, but there was no formal write-up. Um, and so it really made it difficult trying to get an accurate location of, of what he did and where. Um, but it looks like they had a lot of fun out here. Some of the other methods that I used were, of course, some good old Sanborn maps. These came in real handy looking at buildings that had burned down or structures that were there but aren't now. Um, just some historic data course, aerial photography. Um, I already mentioned my GPR with the 400 megahertz antenna, and of course, some good old ArcMap tools. <laughs> some of those ArcMap tools included just georeferencing some images. This image was one of my favorites because Dr. Joyce marked her concrete datum here. It was just really 
arbitrarily done, but what I tried to do is just drop a point. Again, it's, it's not spatially accurate, but what is accurate is just kind of like this overlay. Um, I can't remember what I used for my control points, but I think, I think they were one of these buildings. But you can see she has her units 13 through 31 over here. So it kind of came out nice. Another thing that was super helpful that came in this big box of stuff were some transit measurements that um, her students did. So basically she had marked from this datum, I could map in the Northeast and Southeast corner of all of her units with the distance direction tool. And so that's exactly what I did. So we have 13 through 31, and they all came out pretty good. Looks like she had some two by twos, some one by twos. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened to unit 23. I don't know if it's two one by twos put together or, or unit 31. I mean, it's who knows, but I think for the most part, it all kind of came out pretty good. I'm trying to map Ken stuff into uh, this kind of cohesive map was, again, really difficult. Um, like I said, there was no formal documentation that was done to the site. Um, so I was just really kind of using these um, shapes that he used for just presentation purposes only. Um, he did use some GPR data. That was really interesting. I think they are using a 270 megahertz antenna there, but I can't be 100% sure. So that's what I did with Ken. So let's look at some of the stuff that um, me and my group worked on. So we had two collection days. Um, and on the first collection day, the day before, it had rained so much, so much, guys. And I was like, this is not going to work. There's way too much water and on the ground, in the soil. It's We're going to get really crappy data. But we went out there and we did it anyway. So we have grid one, um, 14 by 25 meters. Grid two, 14 by 27 meters. And this is all in that 313 lot. So we processed some of that data and we're like, ooh, yeah, let's go back. So we came back for two reasons. One, to collect, I guess for three reasons. One, to collect um, just this grid four from what we had found in our previous results. Two, hope for drier conditions. Three, also collect uh, grid five. And also the Historical Society wanted to have like this uh, community day where they wanted the community to come out members of the Historical Society to come, feel free to ask questions. Maybe we can explain what we were doing. So that was another reason for a second collection day. So let's put some of our results with Dr. Joyce's um, work. So if you remember that overlay map that we did, um, this is grid one from our very first coll collection day. Um, and if you see, we really have kind of this homogenous soil. Nothing is really happening until we get to the back of the grid. Um, or we're just like, boom, there's a lot of high amplitude reflection going on. And you're like, well, what is this? I have a couple of theories why this is the way it is. Um, this structure right here, when I looked at the Sanborn map, it had obviously burned down in one of the previous years. So Either this is kind of rubble from the structure that has burned down and it's just been kind of pushed out, you know, and mixing with the regular soil and kind of urbanizing it. Or these units right here are from Dr. Joyce's 1983 unit. Um, and this very well just could be backfill um, from these units. Looking at, so this is grid one, looking at grid two from our first collection day, we have Dr. Joyce's archeological unit 13 through 31 map. Um, of course, this building wasn't 
here. But as you can see, she's really not, she's not hitting anything. There's the GPR is not showing anything of significance. Um, so of course she was just finding small artifacts like nails, pieces of pottery, that kind of thing. Putting maps for Ken, my goodness. So um, Ken had kind of just told me some of the parcels that he had worked in. And based on some of the PowerPoint presentation, I literally just kind of went in and eyeballed it. Um, so this is one of the parcels in an area that he excavated. Um, parcel number two was an area that he excavated. Um, parcel number three in this area. He did do some GPR data over here, which was really helpful. Um, I have that down here. This is the only GPR data that um, he provided. And you can see, it looks like he's kind of caught this uh, pipeline or um, concrete pipeline structure. I don't think it's, we definitely don't think it's part of this wall because it's just not the correct direction of it. Um, this was the parcel for um, his other excavation area that he did. But as you can see, the parcel that he has listed is not anywhere near the area that he did his actual work in. Um, I'm thinking perhaps this is just maybe parcel boundary shift, outlines are changed, or maybe it's, it's just um, an error since these were just kind of eyeballed by him. So. Looking some more at our results that we got, this is grid two, which was collected on the first day, the very rainy day. And if you look kind of back, look here at the back of the grid, we definitely have some high amplitude reflections or some medium to medium high amplitude reflections. And you can kind of see the features are really exaggerated in comparison to grid four, which was on our second collection day when we came back, the soil was much more drier. Um, and these lines are kind of much more clearer. Now, personally, I actually prefer this wonky water content field data because I really think it exaggerates the features, um, which is kind of like a double edged sword because, you know, you never want to have your features exaggerated, but I really think it does a good job of showing whatever it is in this back corner. So if you remember from the first like little intro of the prison, and I have transect 11 here, a transect is like basically the line that you just push the GPR buggy um, down in your grid. So if we look right here, we can, and our, if we look at our slice, we kind of have this homogeneous soil meets high amplitude reflection followed by another void of homogeneous soil and it kicks right back up to a lot of reflections. Um, and so it's just my personal opinion, but I think it looks quite a lot like um, this entryway. So what I've done here is I've overlaid, the black is the Rowan County GSI, their original map, basically just done from historic drawings and um, recounts of personal experiences. And the white is um, our geophysical survey data. And when I put everything, the prison together, it's literally just a shift. So if you ask me, I think the Rowan County did a phenomenal job of just kind of putting this prison, um, not arbitrarily, but they really did a good job if, if they were only off by, I forget what the exact measurement is now, but maybe like a meter, meter and a half, um, something like that. But they did a really good job. So looking at, the Rowan um, prison outline with Dr. Joyce's work, with Ken's work, and I just have our areas of interest um, highlighted. You can see if um, the Rowan drawing was accurate, then Dr. Joyce should have 
picked up on this subsurface feature. She should have hit it. Um, and mind you, I forgot to mention the GPR data only hit like uh, 2.5 meters. It's, it's right below the surface. Um, so if she actually was going based off these drawings, she should have hit it. Um, Ken should have excavated a small portion. I think this building here was one of the hospitals, if I'm not um, mistaken. So they definitely should have done something. Um, looking over here to where we've shifted it, it makes sense that Dr. Joyce didn't get anything and neither did Ken um, with these um, with the results that we got back. I'm not, I'm still really confused what happened over here with, with Ken's data. Um, but I guess that's, that's for another time <laughs> and some, possibly some follow-up questions that I should have, um, gone to him with, but let's see. Oh, yeah, this is just some pictures. These are members of the historical society. They're super nice. They're really excited. Um, this is a picture from our community day. This is me doing absolutely nothing. Um, and my friend Ari is doing all the work. This was one of the students who was interested in GIS slash geography, and we're just letting him push the buggy around. Um, I do think uh, they wanted us to come back and excavate the project. Um, so I submitted a scope of work. Um, you know, of course, my professor was like, you have to pay yourself. You have to pay these people who you're going to be working with. Um, but unfortunately, since the university takes such a high overhead, the overhead was like 40%, um, our budget was quite high. So <laughs> unfortunately, they didn't decide to hire us to come back and actually do the excavation work, although I was really willing and ready. Um, so they went with a private company. Oh. I think someone's mic is on. Oh, but that's okay, because I'm finished anyway. Um, but that's it, guys. Oh, there's always people to thank. Um, and so if, if anyone has any easy questions, because it's been a while, let me... I have a question. Oh, yeah. Um, so you referenced um, Sanborn maps. Uh, and in the past, like in the really recent past, I, that came up in one of my, um, in like a little research assignment I had over at, um, at work. And I'm wondering, can you tell me more about those maps? Because I, I looked them up, I looked at them, I referenced them, but I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> so I wonder if I can, um, if I exit out of this and... Can you guys still see the screen? Can you still see it? Yes. Okay. So basically these insurance maps are taken um, every so often and it, it's basically showing these a boundary or a parcel number and it's showing every structure within that parcel. So what is happening is you're seeing, you know, has someone built a house? Has something burnt down? Um, sometimes georeferencing them and interpreting interpreting them are really kind of tricky because you're like, okay, well, this this feature is here in this Sanborn map in this 1913-1902, but is it here in? It's not here in this 1931 image. So they are tricky to kind of interpret, um, and so it just it just takes a while. Look, it, I know it took me some time looking at them and trying to figure out, okay, well, where am I? And just geo-referencing them into ArcMap to kind of get like a spatial area going on. But 
they're really helpful as, as far as seeing what buildings are there and aren't there. And it really helped, um, especially when looking at Dr. Joyce's units, I noticed um, one of the buildings, I think it was this one here. It used to be a structure, is it this building? Um, one of the structures had burned down and that it was based off these Sanborn maps. So, is there uh, a um, is there a single source that can be used for finding uh, historical and uh, really recent uh, Sanborn maps? I know that whenever I just contacted any kind of like county, like I got these directly from Rowan County. They were really helpful in, in just giving me the information that I wanted. Um, so I'm guessing a lot of counties, uh, at least I know here in the States, when you contact um, a county, they have a certain amount of historical uh, GIS later, layers you can download. And um, Rowan just had these all waiting. Of course, like I said, I, I did have to georeference them, but they had them all in just like a PDF file. Um, so I would definitely check with the county and just maybe send them an email. Do you have any historic um, maps? And I'm thinking one of them even has like a tab that says like Sanborn maps, or I think there's an actual website um, that just has like a whole host of, of Sanborn insurance maps. Huh. I will have to look into that. Um, great presentation, by the way. I This is so cool. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Like I said, you'll never get this time back. <laughs> it's gone. Um, I don't want it back. This is great. <laughs> um, so me... I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I tuned in a little bit late in the presentation, and I believe that a lot of other people as well. And uh, I think that my question might be helpful to them as well. Um, can you explain with only two or three sentences what was the purpose of the of, of this project? The purpose of the project was to not only locate the prison barracks, but to bring together all past, current, and possible future work done um, in that area. If I had to just uh, yes, I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. No, no problem. Well, a uh, quick question. Um, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, if someone has an idea, let's just say if he is doing a project, a GIS project, can he make a presentation here in this court in order to be helpful uh, to the others, to share his experience? Justice, if they have if they have a project just to like share with within the server, is, is that what you're asking? Yes, yes. Uh, to share some experience like you just did uh, in order to oh. maybe help others in the future. Oh, yeah. Um, by all means, like I said, uh, we have a, a presentations channel and anyone who wants to present some work that they're doing or projects that they are working on or even just a topic that they find quite interesting um i know i'd be happy to hear and i'm sure lots of others would be interested in hearing so please feel feel free to share anything <laughs> all right great <clears throat> all right guys well i really appreciate everyone's time and um We'll get that at every one <laughs> removed. Uh, I hope <laughs> I'll, I'll Sorry. fix it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, well, sorry. I thought it was appropriate, but whatever. But uh, thank it's... you for presenting. Well, thank you guys for coming, and, and no worries. I, I had a good time, and I appreciate it. So thanks, guys. Um... Good presentation. Thank you.